Corvette Museum. It's big, it's loud, lots of bright paint, and people are everywhere looking at stuff and admiring things that we, that we made ourselves, created here in, in America for Americans. Japanese don't like Corvettes. Too damn big. We do. Russians don't like them. They burn gas. That requires an octane of above about 25 or 30. So it's just for us. Europeans, their roads are too small. So it's just for us. It's very American. So if you ever get a chance to come to Bowling Green, Kentucky, come on, take a look. Come to the Corvette Museum. It's right off of exit uh, 28 off of Highway 65, northbound or southbound, a little bit south of Louisville. So come and take a look. Bowling Green, Kentucky, the National Corvette Museum. Well, it was right off the highway, so I just had to stop. It's the National Corvette Museum. And it's a really a big place. Here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, seems to be a preponderance of Corvettes in the parking lot. I don't know why. Lots of GM cars and of course uh, I have my rented Kia van which is parked way over there someplace. But uh, in the spirit of things I, I'm going to go in and, and uh, take a look to see what's inside the National Corvette Museum. thought I'd show you this so the uh, women can find their way. And the men is uh, marked about the same way. And here's the museum proper. It's a pretty big building. Corvette, America's sports car. And there's a Corvette store over there. We might have to go in there after we see the exhibits and buy something. Museum library archive, museum delivery. Because you can take delivery of your car here too. And some uh, like uh, 80s and 90s vets sitting here on display for some reason. I think the Virginia Sports Car Club is here. But uh, let's go inside and see what's going on. Here I am with Harley Earl, who is the father of the car vet. Google this guy, he's a pretty interesting stylist. Buick Riviera. Buick Roadmaster, uh, all the GM designs. Uh, he's a pretty cool dude. Uh, so I'm here at the uh, Corvette Museum and we're going to be taking a look at seeing what's So if you ever wondered how the Corvette got its name, actually its name comes from a, uh, of course you can't read that, comes from a small ship. In French, Corvette means uh, fast. Telling any story you start at the beginning. And uh, Corvettes started in 1953 with a uh, stove bolt six in the front of them and here's the original 1953 Corvette. Quite a nice little vehicle. Quite nice. Can't get too close but very nice. Single one of us that didn't wish they had a Duntoff cam in our Chevy and here he is. Speaking of Duntov, this is the only Corvette he ever owned. A Stingray. Suitably uh, pinstriped with his name right there. Nice looking car. Nice looking car. 1974 Corvette Stingray. Touring along his museum and all of a sudden there's a whole section. Look behind me. It's all NASCAR cars. So. Let's take a look at uh, what uh, NASCAR has to do with Chevrolet. Well, Chevrolet's got a lot to do with NASCAR and vice versa, but what's it doing in a car van is in? I guess it starts out with actually having a pace car that was a Chevrolet Carvette. Spiffied up pretty nicely here. Perlator oil filter. NASCAR. And equipped, of course, with champion spark plugs. With a, just a whole passel of cars. Even some Ford stuff in here. Chevrolet, Buicks. Even a Richard Petty car. Makes a, all kinds of things in here.
Very nice little display. I'm going to try to get in here a little ways. Probably the most famous of the Chevrolet NASCAR vehicles ever. It's a 1973 Holly Farms Chevrolet driven by Jimmy Johnson. Said the first of the, what they call porcupine head uh, 396s, which later became 427s, which later became uh, 454s, which later became 473s, whatever. Giant motors. And it was the first of the big block Chevys. That won the race in 1963 with a driver named Junior Johnson. Holly Farms Poultry. 427 Benny Parsons car from years ago. I had a Chevelle about that year with a little different roof on it. You could hardly buy that kind of roof. You had a little squared off roof you bought if you were a regular guy. If you're a NASCAR racer, you could buy this car. It's a lot more streamlined, faster. Very neat little car. Not a little car, it's a big car. Well, this ends my tour of the uh, Corvette Museum, and as with all men of a certain age, I'm going to be stopping someplace. Because we guys of a certain age just don't miss those stops.